Okay, so this is the uh, roof of the curved building. Uh, you'll probably remember this from a build series I did a while back. Um, I'll move the water tank out of the way. Uh, as you can see, there are uh, like uh, rock or gravel on the roof, along with uh, you know debris and wet spots and vents and all that. Um, that rock is black. Uh, sand that uh, that came from uh, volcanic sand. Um, now that sand I've used on a few roofs. Uh, here's another one. This is the uh, Puget Sound Seafood Company. Um, you know, it's basically got the same uh, style of texture. What it does is that it, uh, it kind of hides uh, imperfections. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty good in the process, so you know, it's not too bad, it's not wonderful, but then again, uh, you know, I'm not the greatest model in the world, but a try. So that's, uh, you know, that's one way to do a roof. And if you watch uh, older 70s movies like I do once in a while, you'll see, uh, you know, like, um, uh, what was that movie called? Uh, the Clint Eastwood... Uh, Magnum Force. He's up on the roof of a building and he's uh, looking at a roof of another building or was it the Deadpool? I can't remember. And uh, you know the rooftop chases you know from 70s movies and you'll see that there's a lot of white rock or gray rock or black rock on the roofs. Um, I'm not sure why they did that. Uh, <laughs> If any of you have uh, the reasons out there, you can let me know. Uh, but, uh, you know, when you're looking at an overall structure, it does look pretty... Uh, looks pretty good with uh, the gravel. Uh, looks a lot better in person than it does on my camera, I think. Uh, but uh, we'll go ahead and get back to the uh, layout bench, or workbench, excuse me. Okay, so that was definitely uh, one... Uh, type of uh, roof to uh, to model uh, for this one I'm going to do a uh, a different uh, type of roof uh, mainly because it's uh, angled and angled roofs don't have gravel on them at least I don't think so so uh, and there's many different ways to model a roof when you're gluing it when you're cutting it when you're measuring it uh, I'm going to do something a little different than most of you have probably seen before and some of you might not like this, but uh, I'm going to try it here, live, on a video, to see if it works. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run a bead of glue now before I cut the roof. I want to get all four corners of this roof glued before I cut it. So, uh, there might be some people out there right now who are saying, No, 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 don't do that, don't do that. I like to keep things new and fresh and different. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to glue this long piece on there. As you can see, it's very long. I'm going to get it glued on there nice and tight, all four corners, so it does not move when I measure and cut later. So, I will uh, sit here and hold this and be bored, uh, but by the magic of the camera, you will not have to sit here and watch it. Okay, I think it's been uh, sitting long enough. It actually didn't take very long at all. Uh, I've only been sitting here uh, daydreaming for five, six minutes. <laughs> and uh, there we go. Voila. I'll let you in on the secret of why I did it the way I did it. Uh, go ahead and zoom out so you can see this. Every roof is different. Every roof has overhangs over the sides for uh, water and drainage. Uh, but when we're modeling, we try to save every piece that we can so we can cover every bit of surface that we can. I don't want too much overhang on this building. You're never going to look up underneath the building and see the bottom of the overhang anyway. 
And most people aren't going to say, oh, look at the overhang on that building. You know, that's not, that's not going to be important. What is important, however, is having it straight. By gluing this on here, not only do I defy the laws of measurement by just saying, I'm going to pass up the measurement, and I'm going to be able to glue this roof on here, take my X-Acto knife, mark out exactly where I want it to be on the top and on the bottom because this is racked. It's not going to be straight. So I marked on the top. I'm going to mark. It's a little dark under here, but that's all right. I mark the same distance on the bottom. Find a flat surface where I can cut this on. I'll define my mark a little better on both sides. And now I know exactly where my mark is. So I can put this on a square surface and cut it. Now the reason why I did that is because, like I said before, this has been racked. It's off-centered. It's not straight and it'll never be 100% straight because I made it up as I was going. I made it up, I measured, but you're never going to get precise measurements from like a machine shop on a structure like this when you're kit bashing. This is not going to happen. Pardon my neighbor and his loud car. Um, but uh, yeah, it's really not that hard. So the only thing I need to do now is find uh, a square something. I have uh, an engine box here I can use. Not a big deal. I can set this right on there right up to the edge and cut it. I want to put my first initial scribe mark on there. Now I'm doing it by eye. I can go a little harder the second time. And then I can go very hard the third time. And I should be able to snap it off without a problem. Not sure if I want to yet. I'm a little worried about it. <laughs> so I'll probably cut it a couple more times. I also haven't changed my blade yet in a while probably should, but I like to use the blade until I can't use it anymore. That's how I'm able to, uh, oops, I missed the mark. I need glasses. I can't see very well. Yes, the older we get, the worse the eyesight gets. That's something I have to look forward to. Okay, I notice this is starting to come unglued a little bit, but that is not a problemo. I find a nice square section of workbench here. That's what we need to do. It's come unglued, but that's okay because I have my. estimate of how the roof goes together. Let me give this a shot of glue real quick. But I will show you that that's how it goes. A lot of people won't like the way I just did that. They'll say, oh, I did that backwards. 
Well, I kind of did, but not really. You see, there are no written rules on how you're supposed to model. What is written is, is that nothing is for sure. And what I mean by that is the racking of the building. Whereas it might be four and an eighth inches up here, it might be four and a quarter down here. And if, well, if it's off that far, it's going to be noticeable. But uh, if it's off just an eighth of an inch, uh, you may not see it until you get it all the way built or until you cut all the pieces. And by the time you cut all the pieces off, and you fit them on there and you start gluing them and you get three quarters of the way done you realize wow this piece is way off I have a gap like that far how in the heck did that happen well a lot of times uh, there's this term uh, that uh, uh, people who, who uh, are into um, uh, what are those people called uh, carpentry I'm not a carpenter I mean, not with full-size houses or anything, or building sheds. You ought to see my chicken coop, it's horrible. But uh, that's, that's another story. Um, uh, in carpentry, a lot, you'll hear people say, um, four and a quarter and cut the line. Well, uh, obviously a saw blade is uh, a lot wider than uh, an X-Acto knife blade but uh, it really does matter if you're off even a fifth of an inch if you're off just a fifth um, it will it will turn out to be you know an eighth or maybe even a quarter uh, not because of the width of the blade but because uh, the initial uh, measurement was off by just a minute hair uh, and that and that happens quite a bit when you're kit bashing, not so much when you're building a, a kit and you're just following the instructions and you're gonna make it look like it does on the box. Um, you know that's that's quite different. Uh, if I could just secure this right here so it didn't move with this one piece, then I can measure the rest and cut them and put them on there. Uh, this first piece, however was special and it had to be it had to be glued on there and it had to be on there where I could see top from bottom you know obviously it's a little rough it needs to be sanded but you can see that uh, from top to bottom the overhang is pretty darn close if I were to measure and do that I'd have never got it right there is not a lot of modelers out there who would have got that right. And that's why people don't tend to kit bash or scratch build because it can be frustrating. You know, it could be hair pulling it at times. You just want to yank your own hair out and ah, quit. I don't want nothing to do with it. Um, you know, it, it, that happens. Um, but now, you know, I can set this building or this uh, roof piece up here, the second piece. I can see where it goes, I can take my X-Acto knife and make a mark at the top of the peak where the roof needs to come down. If I can hold it in place without it moving and take my X-Acto knife and scribe a mark at the bottom. Voila! Now I do not need to glue it on there first and then cut it. I have my first piece on, I know exactly where it goes, I'll take my straight edge, stick it on the roof piece where it goes, and then I will cut it off. Everybody has their own different techniques, you, know, you don't have to follow what I'm doing. A lot of people might still try to follow what I'm doing and scratch their head and say, how the hell did you do that? I don't understand. Um, you know, this is just what I do. I'm not telling you to do this because it's it can be pretty tough at times. Um, I'm just telling you how I do it because a lot of people have asked. How do you do that? How do you plan for this? Uh, how do you do that? How'd you, how'd you cut that out? How'd you measure that? Uh, like I said, it's not really rocket science. Anybody can do this. 
and I am not the best at this. I've seen a lot of people that were just super talented at uh, at what they do and making things really a one of a kind and having a great time with it. Uh, and it ends up turning out looking awesome. Uh, you know, it's like I said, I'm not the greatest at this, but uh, I was asked to show it, so I'm gonna try to show as much as I can. Um, and that's that. Okay, so now you see the uh, the grooves on the bottom and on the side over here. This groove on the side over here will have to be sliced off flush. And then I'll have to cut a notch out of this top piece here so it can ride on the inside brace. And so this notch down here can actually clear this short piece of roof right here. Uh, I will cut away, I'll slice those off, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about.